He called the police for help because his ex-girlfriend came into the house, broke into his house, and she had a knife. Police came, busted in, and unalived him instead of unaliving the person that had the knife or taking other steps and measures to protect themselves and the citizens. A lot of people are looking at this like, well, Donald Trump in the office, the police officer going to get away with it. No, he's not. It's all circumstance-based. Oh. Put your hands up! Two days after 43-year-old Brandon Durham was shot and killed by Las Vegas Metro Police Officer Alexander Bookman, Durham's family has been left to pick up the pieces as they try to make sense of a tragedy they say could have been prevented. He was the victim. And I am disgusted that the Metropolitan Police will allow me to live fatherless for the rest of my life. In a Thursday afternoon briefing, Las Vegas Metro Police released a minute-long video showing officers arriving to Durham's home early Tuesday morning after police were dispatched in response to reports of a shooting. Durham told the call taker that the subjects were attempting to enter his residence and that he was inside his residence with his 15-year-old daughter. Once on scene, officers witnessed several vehicles along with the windows of the home had been damaged and after hearing banging and screaming coming from inside the home, officers quickly jumped into action. Metro investigators say Officer Bookman was one of the first to arrive on scene where he encountered two subjects, Durham and the second person identified as Boudreaux, struggling over a knife. Hey! Hey, drop the knife! After seeing the video, Durham's family says Officer Bookman didn't give him a chance, saying police treated him as if he were the aggressor. My father was the absolute victim, no matter what could have happened. The violence that occurred here was under someone who was extremely, extremely angry and extremely violent. And the most frustrating part about all of this is it's very difficult for you to even watch. you The man that is clearly in his home, minding his own business, trying right. to call for assistance, you shoot him instead of the one that's in a red hoodie Ooh. and a ski mask. The police assistant sheriff, Dory Corrin. Oh, no, nah, that's crazy. At hand, a challenging one. That's very important for all of us to understand because we have the luxury, but our officers, unfortunately, have a very challenging job that during these types of incidents, they don't have the ability to stop time and stop a video and get a still and then spend minutes, let alone hours or days or months, analyzing that information to make their decision. Ooh. They have a matter of seconds, if not split seconds, to make very challenging decisions. Well, you know what? That's actually false. Officers are only allowed to use deadly force like that is if their safety is at risk. If somebody is charging at them, per perhaps specifically like... Uh, the black writer or producer or something like that that charged at the officer up in New York City and she got sprayed. There was no protest, no outcry, no none of that for her because we absolutely knew she was wrong. This is a situation where there's a domestic dispute and two people are going at it. The officer is not going to lose his life or her life because this person is perhaps going to try to unalive this other person. So in the name of officer safety doctrine as set forth in John Terry versus Ohio 1969, go look at the case. It started stopping frisk. Your life wasn't in danger. You shouldn't even had lethal force out to restrain someone who was fighting or presenting themselves to be a problem to somebody else. Unless it was actual lethal force. And then on top of that, you mistake this black man. You shot him five or six times while the person in a ski mask gets to go to jail. While the person in the ski mask was there to unalive him and you did that person's job for them. I'm starting to think that maybe the officer heard the call, heard the 911 call of him being in distress. How, how, how correlated is this officer to that particular location, to that particular individual? Felt personal to me. Felt very personal to me in Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay. I mean, this is the same place that the Wiley show went and did a fake bomb threat at the Walmart. Ain't nobody shoot him. Ain't nobody use lethal force at him. Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm sure they knew who this was. It's a very small, tight knit community, especially when you work in Las Vegas, Nevada, especially if you work on the script. All the police officers know you. You got to have guard cards and licenses and all this. That they know exactly who you are and what you do. And oftentimes, who you're dealing with. 
this couldn't be the first time that he called law enforcement to come check out a crazy an ex that broke into his house who knows he probably had a restraining order against her but now he's the vic he's her victim and he's the victim of the police and I used to think it was a situation where law enforcement just didn't protect black women when they were at risk of being unalived or needing uh, emergency restraining orders. It's a black issue. And, you know, they are pretty much biracial. So is it a black issue? Is it a people personal issue? I think it's going to be very interesting to see how Las Vegas plays a role in this, especially since they had such a hard time determining if it was a Democratic state or if it was a Republican state. All of that is going to play a role in this. How is the state going to handle this? This has nothing to do with the Fed. I want to know because, I mean, Las Vegas, Nevada, this is the same state that just made slavery an involuntary um, working in prison illegal. So I'm very, I'm very, very interested to see how this is going to play out within the next couple of days. Or is this going to be another story where a black man was pow powed and we cover it now and we're emotionally outcried and nobody does anything on a legislative level, on a legal level. If I'm not mistaken, this is just like a Breonna Taylor. Well, not exactly, but this, this is actually worse than Breonna Taylor. Are we going to forget about it because this is a man, a black man? It's very interesting. Please hit the like, subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you guys think about this.